when you say artery stiffness, what is that and why is that a problem? Well, it's an incredibly complex thing. Every, everybody knows what stiffness is. Something stiff, it's, it's more rigid. But um, what's causing an increase in stiffness in, a, in an aorta? You know, we've been talking about endothelial cells and smooth muscle cells, but a blood vessel wall has other components in it. And you want them, when they're healthy, you want them to be bendy? Yeah, you want them to be somewhat elastic. So that the aorta, for example, when the heart's pumping, when it pumps in, in what's called systole, it pushes blood out into the, into the aorta. The aorta stretches a little bit and stores some of that energy within the walls of the blood vessel. Then when the heart relaxes in diastole, the aorta is then able to use that energy to propagate blood flow. It also helps get blood flow into the coronary circulation of the of the heart. Which occurs during uh, during diastole. diastole. So yeah. as the heart is relaxing, that's as, when yeah. it's fed with blood. But yeah, because during systole it's contracting and those vessels are, are somewhat compressed. Um <clears throat> so there's there's a thought, well it, it's, it's known that if you look at people over time, and this was done in the Framingham studies, for example, that if you look at large artery stiffness and you measure this through a, um, a variable called pulse wave velocity, which is basically measuring the um, pulse wave as it travels through a certain length of of the aorta. So as you stiff, stiffen the blood vessel, that pulse wave gets quicker. So if you plot that over time, it is predictive of um, future coronary events. N not within necessarily within an individual, but on a population basis. If your arteries are stiffer, you're more likely to have a major coronary event in the ensuing years. Um, <clears throat> so the questions are, how does the, the stiffness in those large vessels, how, if at all, is that affecting the, the microvasculature? It propagates the pressure pulse into the microvasculature. So normally when you've got those elastic arteries, it dampens the pressure pulse and pressure decreases as it goes down into into the microcirculation. So um, if we're talking about arterioles and capillaries, the pressure is down to about, let's say, 10 to 30 millimeters of mercury, whereas mean arterial pressure in the aorta is around 100 millimeters of mercury. So there's been quite a pressure drop off. Now, if you've got a stiff artery, that pressure gets propagated further and further downstream and is, is thought to be a, um, a, a risk factor for damage in those small blood vessels, like in the kidney, the eye, the heart, the brain. And what are, what are the, the major risk factors for developing stiffness? Is that something that's just occurring with age? mentioned there the aorta is kind of you know um, taking that energy and then uses it to push blood through the body is it just over time the elasticity naturally is reduced and that that tissue becomes <laughs> stiffer and stiffer or are is the way that we live um are we able to kind of attenuate that it's multifactorial there's there's no doubt an age component um that depends on the sort of um, extracellular matrix or the scaffolding within the vessel walls. So these the cells that we've been talking about all sit within an extracellular matrix, and two of the proteins you would have heard of are collagen and elastin. Elastin, by its name, gives the elasticity to the blood vessel. Collagen's a lot stiffer. Now. 
elastin is laid down very early in life, and that's your elastin. So over time with aging, one of the hypotheses is that elastin becomes fragmented or breaks, and the vessel becomes less elastic. But there are other vents that can impact on that uh, um, extracellular matrix. You could have an inflammatory response that leads to more production of collagen, which is stiffer. You could have, in the case of diabetes, where you get glycation of, of um, extracellular proteins um, that causes abnormal crosslinks and causes stiffening of the, uh, of, the, um, of the blood vessel wall. All right, so you can add fuel to the fire yes. in some ways. Uh, I'm just thinking of the listener who is kind of taking all of this in and they're thinking, okay, professor, it sounds like it's in my best interest to not not end up with these very small vessels, arterioles, capillaries, uh, becoming overly constricted. That sounds like a bad idea. <laughs> it also sounds like a bad idea to have larger arteries becoming stiff or stiffer than they need to be as I'm, I'm aging other than you know eating a healthy diet so let's say someone's listening and they're trying to do a very plant-rich mediterranean style diet they are exercising maybe they're playing squash four four times a week so they're doing their cardio they're not smoking they're not vaping is there anything else that people need to think about or in doing all of those things are they doing everything they can do for not only reducing their risk of, say, atherosclerosis, which is probably a big reason why people do some of those things I just mentioned, but um, that are also the same kind of behaviors that would influence stiffness, uh, constriction of small vessels. One, one of the things you didn't put in your list there was obesity. Um, so certainly... Uh, um, not becoming obese, coupled with obesity, you see insulin resistance. And there are thought to be major factors for, um, you know, causing blood vessel dysfunction and also uh, uh, vascular stiffening. Um, but again, that goes along with a health, healthy life, lifestyle. What are your thoughts? I know you're not a physician, but you're, you've written papers on diabetes and insulin resistance. What are your thoughts on that drugs like Ozempic? Because that kind of ties into this. At least it's, a, it's an intervention targeted at uh, helping people lower their body weight successfully in a sustainable way. I think that's probably you know, a reasonable approach with the armamentarium of things we've got um, when – it's very difficult for people to to maintain compliance to some of these other other interventions. Um, it's probably not not the best way, but um, it's hard when when we live in the environment that we live in. This food environment makes it pretty hard to make good food choices. Yes, all the it time. Does. <laughs> uh, you have to kind of rely on willpower, which is not a great thing to, to rely on. But some of these drugs are also <laughs> not available to all populations. Um, they're very expensive. Um, so we, we need to understand the mechanisms a lot better. Yeah. I would certainly like to see r huge and rapid changes to the, to the food environment, but I'm, I'm not holding my my breath on that at least not in the the short term what about vaping i mentioned vaping is that have you looked at we know that cigarettes damage endothelium and i'm going to assume that they they affect possibly stiffness or the function mm -hmm. of small vessels i'll let you elaborate on that but vaping's become very popular and i think there is somewhat of an idea out there that it's either not harmful or nowhere near as harmful as smoking cigarettes. 
and they're very widely accessible. They come in all these flavors that kids love. I think a lot of parents out there are somewhat worried because they're seeing this as a new behavior and habit that's taken off, worried that, hey, we haven't studied these. Scientists maybe don't even know what's happening and we could be seeing the same thing that we saw with cigarettes, tobacco, um, you know, through the 60s and, and 70s. Do you have any opinions, strong or not strong opinions about vaping? Well, I think you're absolutely right. We don't know enough about it at the moment. Um, there are studies that are going on that are <clears throat> looking at both the sort of nicotine components and non-nicotine components. Um, and <clears throat> the jury's still out on, on what's, <laughs> what's damaging and what's not. But, <clears throat> you know, it just makes sense to me that you don't want to put anything into your lungs that was, wasn't meant to be there. The tissue is pretty sensitive. Um, <clears throat> you mentioned pollution as, you know, a growing body of evidence that exposure to small particles in the polluted environments and um, just, you know, the environments we, we live in with all the, the cars and everything that... Uh, that <clears throat> that exacerbates uh, vascular stiffness, increases cardiometabolic susceptibility to cardiometabolic disease. Um, Should we move to the woods? Is that the answer? Yeah, I think it'd be good. But then everybody would move to the woods, and we'd be in the same problem. <laughs>